Hi everyone, this is Neil Bolger and welcome back to Mastering the Basics of eQuest Energy Modeling. We are going to look at the detailed data edit mode or what is commonly seen as the standard way of editing eQuest. Uh, I just call it eQuest, the detailed mode. Uh, and as you get more familiar with eQuest, you will become more familiar with editing the building in this fashion and really realize the power that the wizards provide in setting up models in order to get this more advanced detailed editing ability. So again, here's our little building. And right now this building is in a wizard mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up to mode and switch that to detailed data edit. And so what that has now done is it has now unlocked a whole bunch of fields for all the different parameters of the building. So now when we go into other tutorials, you'll see we'll click on components and all the input fields that I can change have now become white. Everything that used to be grayed out and was being defined by the wizard. So with that, I wanna go over this interface because now this is the interface to change the entire model and manipulate the model. And so I wanna understand what is this main navigational tree? What are each of these main tabs? What is the component tree? and how to sort of read the model and navigate. So we have six tabs at the top, the project and sites tab, the shell, the building, where we can manipulate the construction and glass and shading, the internal loads, where we can change people, lighting, plugs, infiltration, daylight sensors. We have two air conditioning tabs. The air side is usually more helpful to think of first, where we define each air conditioning system and a thermal zone set it serves, and then the centralized water side that serves these air systems. So this chilled water coil is attached to this chilled water loop. And this coil will take us right back. You can see I clicked the coil. It says I live inside this air-based system. And then the last tab is the utility and economics tab. And in each tab, you're able to edit the major components of those systems. And there's lots of shared inputs, such as the schedules of use that define both air conditioning use, internal loads use, or the economic hourly rates of electricity schedules. And so in this component tree that's changing as I switch to each tab, things do change, such as on the building shell, you're able to go through a space and see the walls in that space and then the glass on that wall, and everything can be edited. If you click on any of this, you get the properties, size of that glass. Some things are the same on every tab you click on, no matter what tab you're looking at. And those are often at the very bottom, these schedules. Schedules come in three layers. They come in annual, weekly, and daily. Where an annual schedule, if I look at one of these, an annual schedule is made up of a bunch of weekly schedules. Here, it's just one weekly schedule. That weekly schedule made up of a bunch of daily schedules. And then that daily schedule has a bunch of input data here, fractional data from one to half in the middle of the day. So for every different one of these major sections of the model, as I was saying, you can click on components and change their properties. And they're very similar in each, in each tab. So here we're looking at spaces. But some just functional things to note, I clicked on a space from this tree, this component tree. And whatever I clicked on is also available to look at the one below it in this nice top drop down. And so here you can see all the spaces listed out below it. And if you click and leave the mouse highlighted there, using a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can actually flip through each zone and see all the properties of the basic specs tab. You could also start to see all the properties of the lighting tab as you flip through each room one by one to see things such as the schedules or the lighting power densities. And so the, you know that's just one way to input data into all these fields. Lots of fields, right? Lots of things to look at. It's not as many as it might appear. Not as many that actually matter or that you need to pay attention to. 
So even though this is a detailed mode, it's not that complicated. And you will see how over time. Another thing to note, so that, that same format, if we were to look at air conditioning, just to hammer the point home, if I look at a thermal zone, again, I have this top drop down, all the thermal zones, I can flip through them, see all the properties of the thermal zone air conditioning systems. It's the same in every component throughout the software. The other similar thing is this spreadsheet view where again, if I was to go back to a space and click on spreadsheet, you can see every space listed, the name, the floor it's on. And now I have another drop down where I can see the components of that space. And so this is the exact same data we were editing before. It's just now it's in a spreadsheet format. And it's not that it's easier to edit, it, it's a different way of inputting data, which is good for different points in creation and manipulation of the model. So each different format is kind of there for each user. I do want to remind people that eQuest is a free software that was built on other free softwares. And this spreadsheet view is one of those free components. So while it is so powerful and you can click on things and sort by them, so for instance, if I clicked on space, it just sorted all these spaces alphabetically in some order. Or if I did internal loads, I can sort by things such as the occupancy density. I could click on density and now the least dense is at the top, 226. So it is a powerful spreadsheet mode, but it was free. And so sometimes it can crash. Sometimes copying and pasting lots of things over and over again does not quite work as smoothly as it would in Excel. And so give the spreadsheet mode a little bit of a allowance of your patience. It can exhaust your patience. And sometimes you just have to restart the software and come back to it. The other things to note, summary reports. We'll see some of these once we run the building once or twice. We already ran the air conditioning system, so the summary report is telling us information that it decided upon simulation time, how big is each one of those zones, and so forth. So with that, that's the general overview of the software of how to get around. To simulate, you hit the yellow button to perform the simulation, or at the top, you can go to this tools, perform simulation, and that'll bring up a question of saving first and then run the model and show your results. We'll cover results in a whole other set of interface, a whole set of videos. And with that, we're gonna dive into some detailed ways of editing and making changes.